to this talk. Um, we are currently having a group exhibit. Uh, our group is called the American Society for the Advancement of Chinese Arts. This group was founded by Mr. Ho Bei Ren in 1974. 1979 um, with a group of uh, scholars and artists in the Bay Area. And this group was founded so that we can do cultural and art exchange with China because it was the year of the normalization of US-China relations. And so from that time on, uh, we have worked to modernize Chinese brush painting, uh, bringing American Chinese painters to China, bringing Chinese artists to the United States. And uh, we have had an amazing um, 50 some years. Some of us here have been Mr. Ho students for 30, 40 years. I have only been Mr. Ho students for three years, but I feel like I've known him for a lot longer because of how much we do together. I traveled with him to China twice. Um, just uh, the amount of experience I have had with this group is amazing. Um, so today, we just really wanted to honor Mr. Ho by giving this talk. Mr. Ho is 106 years old this year. Uh, he has had an artistic life, really his entire life. Um, he started when he was just a few years old, and you will see um, in my slides later on. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to explore the splashed ink and color art of Mr. Ho. Um, he is deeply learned in literature and art, um, calligraphy and poetry. In Chinese, we call calligraphy, poetry, and painting the three must to make a great artist. And Mr. Ho has all three. And on top of that, he has modernized Chinese brush painting um, with his splashed ink and color. And he um, really is, his artwork is an amalgamation of uh, East and West. So in the talk today, I will I divide it into three parts. The first part, we will explore who influenced this great master. And the second part, we will take a look at his paintings through the years from uh, basically throughout the slides, you will see his paintings from the 1950s to today. So almost 60 years of work. And number three, we will explore who are his contemporaries in the United States at the time, because Mr. Ho himself says that he was um, quite influenced by the abstract expressionist movement. So let me share screen. Um, and I need to, sorry, I need to go back to the first slide. Here we go. Okay, can you see the slides? Can you see the slide? I think you can. Okay. Yes. Uh, great. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. So, okay, let's look at influ his influences first. So the painting that you see here is of his uh, ancestral hometown, uh, his ancestral home, actually, the Villa of Cult Cultivating the Young in Haicheng, in Liaoning province. Uh, Mr. Ho painted this in 2009, and it was later on, I believe, donated to the Liaoning Art Museum. Um, you can see the houses, the courtyards, and he described, uh, I remember him describing it, there is a pond too, where he would hear um, frogs crowing at night, and look at all the trees, the countryside, and, um, Mr. Ho described his childhood. He went to an elementary school in the countryside first, and then he went to a better elementary school. And this one, uh, he has more of an impression of. And he said that that school was situated on a small hill beside a very, a very large temple. I think when he was little, that temple was very large to him. 
and it was surrounded by many tall cypresses. Uh, and um, the architecture was from the Ming Dynasty. The hill the school was situated on is called Another Hill. I love that name. Uh, Mr. Ho said, the very day he started school, he felt as if he had been in an ancient temple in a remote mountain, deep and serene. And I feel like when I read that description, I kind of think about his current residence in Los Altos as well, which is surrounded by big tall pine trees. And in the back, I remember there was a fish pond and also there are many old apricot and plum trees. And that's why he named his art studio, the old apricot villa. In Chinese, there is a saying that your environment really in influence who you are. And I believe it's the saying here in the US as well. Um, I really see that in Mr. Ho's paintings, even when he's splashing really bright colors, I see a kind of depth and serene feeling in his paintings. And I really think that it is from where he grew up and from where he resides. And let's talk about who influenced his art. The first person who influenced his art is his elementary school teacher, Mr. Li Zhongchang. He described uh, the first, well, he described oh. it as um, his art lessons was his favorite lesson at school. And he said, Mr. Ho said, I still remember the first lecture Mr. Li gave us. He drew some bamboo on a piece of rice paper with just a few strokes, and it looked so good. He told his students that bamboo has a steadfast quality. It would rather break than bend. Human beings should learn from bamboo. At the end of the year, Mr. Lee gave me the mustard seed garden painting manual, and I happily took the manual home, and I painted for everybody who asked for paintings from my country home. And his art career started right then and there. And um, on this slide, you can see a bamboo painted by Mr. Ho in 1960. And I can't help but think that when he painted a bamboo like this, he was probably thinking about his teacher as well from where he started. Uh, when he was in middle school, his Chinese literature teacher, Xu, Xu Bingzhe, uh, Xu Bingzhe, Mr. Xu graduated from Beijing University, a very well-learned man. And he taught Mr. Ho new literature of the time, literature by Lu Xin and Ba Jing. And he encouraged Mr. Ho to give up the mustard seed garden painting manual. And rather than learning from the mustard seed uh, painting manual, to learn from late Ming and Qing dynasty artists such as Shi Tao and Hong Ren. And this started Mr. Ho on a new chapter of his painting career. On this slide, you would see a painting by Shi Tao. This painting is actually in the collection of the Berkeley Art Museum. And I love the colophon, the writing on this painting. And I'll read it to you. It says, ink blobs within ink blobs, broad flower and leaves within ink blobs, brush gliding through the mist, stopping amidst a ripple, no need to finish. And it's the same kind of carefree um, brushwork that I feel like Mr. Ho inherited in his art from Shi Tao. Um, Shi Tao always said, uh, you paint from the heart, you know, rather than being confined by all the rules, he painted from the heart. And I really feel like uh, Mr. Ho took it to heart as he would mention to us all the time to paint from the heart. In 1939, when Mr. Ho was 22 years old, he enrolled in Kyushu University mm -hmm. in Japan on a scholarship. During summer vacation, he would come back to Beijing and learned painting from one of the greatest modern masters, Mr. Huang Binghong. Mr. Huang's high moral character really influenced Mr. Ho's entire lifetime. And here, Mr. Ho said that Mr. Huang told him 
if you really like to paint, you need to put your whole self, your whole spirit into it. Do not think of money or fame. And another thing that Mr. Huang said to Mr. Ho was, painting is like being human. If you don't know how to be human, you wouldn't paint well. Your art is good in so far as your moral character. Mr. Ho said that these words by Mr. Huang influenced his whole life. Mr. Huang was, Mr. Ho said this, Mr. Huang was always very serious. He never joked around the whole time Mr. Ho was learning painting from him. So this picture you see here, um, I took this picture on our trip to China in 2013 to Zhejiang. And this was next to the West Lake. And I remember we saw the statue of Mr. Huang Binghong there. And Mr. Ho walked up to the statue and really respectfully bowed. And um, I was very moved by that scene. And we visited Huang Binghong's home as well on that trip. Um, that was his very respected teacher. And this is Huang Binghong. He lived from 1865 to 1955, 90 years of age. Um, Huang Binghong's paintings, I, I think is amazing, is incredible. Uh, he used a lot of short strokes very powerful, strong, short strokes to create a lot of the sense of movement in the painting, which I never before was seen in Chinese brush painting before. Um, and Huang Binghong has a very famous description of his paintings. He said, where it is dry, it is as dry as the crackling in the autumn wind. And where it is moist, is as moist as the spring rain as if like he's bringing all these elements from nature into his painting. Um, the painting on the right you see was painted when he was 90 years old. And um, one of his other students, Li Keran, said of Mr. Huang's paintings, when you look at Mr. Huang's paintings from afar, there is everything. But when you look at them up close, you can't find anything. Maybe it reminds me a little bit of Mr. Ho's paintings as well. When you look at his flash ink from afar, you can see mountains and rocks and valleys. But when you look at it up close, it's mostly color. It's color. In 1943, when Mr. Ho was 26 years old, he graduated from Kyushu University and returned and, uh, to China. And he went inland to Chongqing. He started working in the graduate school of, for international studies. And at that time, he visited an exhibit by Zhang Daqian uh, of Zhang Daqian's Dun Huang's paintings. And then he visited an uh, exhibit by Fu Baoshi. Uh, it was right around the time when Fu Baoshi was changing his painting style. And the painting on the left you see here is by Zhang Daqian. You can still see, you see, you can see it's very traditional still. And the two paintings on the right is by Fu Baoshi. And you can see that Fu Baoshi's brushstrokes are changing. They are more loose, getting farther away from traditional. In 1945, at age 28, Mr. Ho worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. At age 29, he worked as an editor for the magazine Rebirth in Shanghai. In 1947, at age 30, he was elected as a representative to draw up the new constitution for China, and he moved to Nanjing. 1948, he married Ms. Zhang Yunqing, and at the same year, negotiations failed between the parties, and he went back to Beijing with his family. In 1949, at age 32, he went to Hong Kong. He worked as a writer to support his family while concentrating on painting. He became the student of another master painter, Zheng Shiqiao. Uh, Mr. Zheng was an expert in landscape figures and flower painting. Uh, Mr. Ho and his family stayed in Hong Kong till 1956. This painting you see on, uh, on this slide is painted by Mr. Ho in 1955. You can still see that, you can see that it's still very traditional. In 1956, at age 39, Mr. Ho moved his, with his whole family to the United States. 
And that same year, he had his first solo exhibition in the US at World Journal in San Francisco. And you can see in the photo here, he was painting, he was doing a painting demonstration with his son and his daughter, who are both here today. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, 1957, at age 40, he was hired to teach art at the Pacific Art League in Palo Alto. And he had a solo exhibition there in 1959. He taught in Pacific Art League for almost 55 years till 2011. In 1958, at age 41, he had a solo exhibit at Santa Clara University. In 1963, solo exhibition at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. 1964, solo exhibition in New Orleans Museum. 1965, solo exhibition in UC Berkeley. And there are many, many more exhibitions in between, uh, but I'm just listing some of the more important ones. In 1980, solo exhibition in San Jose Museum of Art and also in 82. In 1984, he went back to China. And I think that was really important too, because it's the first time Chinese people in China, within China, saw splashing and splash color painting. And that was a solo exhibition in the Chinese, uh, China Art Museum in Beijing. In 1987, solo exhibition in Nanjing Art Museum, and the list goes on. For this painting, about this painting um, that he painted in 1957, you can see the brushstrokes is a lot more loose. The trees is very much like ink blobs, just an indication that there are trees there. And I show this live show at uh, Mr. Ho's 105 year old birthday in March. And Mr. Ho commented on this painting and he said, well, I am ready to let go more in this painting. And I think that one of the big, um, why he made this change, one of the influences that he said he moved to the US. I think that that might have, you know, influenced him to let go some more. In the late 1960s, um, the great painting master Zhang Daqian moved from Brazil to Carmel, California. And Mr. Zhang and Mr. Ho, they often got together and they discussed gardening as well as painting. Mr. Zhang advocated changing the traditional painting methods and paying more attention to colors especially in the splashed ink method. Mr. Ho was very much influenced by that train of thought. And at the same time, Mr. Ho said that he was also influenced by the abstract art movement in the US at the time. And the paintings that you see here, um, the lower left painting was painted by Zhang Daqian, probably right around the time when he explored uh, splashed ink painting. And the painting above was painted by Zhang Daqian for Mr. Ho, Actually, both were painted for Mr. Ho. And the one on top was a scenery of um, supposedly South, Southern Chinese landscape in the springtime. But uh, Mr. Ho said that he painted that right after they had a visit together during spring here in the Bay Area. So that could be, could very well be a Bay Area scenery as well. So um, let's take a look at Mr. Ho's paintings through the years. 1970, still quite traditional. He was 55 years old at that time. Uh, the writing on the bottom is by Zhang Daqian. Talk about uh, his the trip to Huangshan. 1979, age 62. You can see that Mr. Ho started to splash there. And the color he chose was um, indigo blue. And let's take a look. 1981, 64 years old. You can see that Mr. Ho splashed ink in the middle of the painting and then green on the bottom. And he would add details for the rocks, islands, trees, houses on the painting. And he leave the atmosphere white is the paper white and the river is white and it's paper white. He didn't add any white at that time. Um, later on, you would see he would add white, but at that time he would insist that adding white would be a no-no. 
because traditional Chinese painting, you never add white. You always leave the space, the empty space. So let's, we'll take a look and see when he started adding white. So 1983, age 66, you can see him pouring ink and color and adding details. And 1986, at 69 years old, uh, I like this painting. I wanted to also use this painting to show you that he often writes poetry on the painting because he's very well learned in literature and he can just pull these things out of his memory. And uh, the I especially find this interesting because this painting, you can kind of see mountains kind of horizontally, vertically, uh, diagonally in all directions. And the paint, uh, the poem that he chose is by Su Shi. It says, viewed horizontally is a range. Viewed vertically, peaks. Assuming different shapes viewed from far and near. But of Mount Lu, we cannot make out its true appearance for we are lost in the heart of this very place. So very appropriate for this painting. So see, do you see white now? the pouring of white. Um, so I believe that probably around the time of mid 1980s, Mr. Ho started using white, white paint to pour on top of his colors and ink. And that added totally a new layer, a new sense of weight um, to, to his splash ink painting. So it's not just the paper white anymore. Um, when we showed the slideshow to him during his birthday, he said that he commented on his paintings from the 1980s and he said, I feel more and more emboldened at this time. So he was 70 years old at that time. 1988, 71 years old, you can see him pouring uh, dark and light ink in the middle of the painting and adding details on the side. 1989, I feel like there is a kind of a slight change here um, as he reached 70 years old. I feel like I see a lot more of bright colors and also lines. And the kind of lines that he used is different from the traditional lines that he used in the past. It's more of um, abstracted lines, more geometric lines. Um, and you would see not just from this painting. Let's see, let's take a look. And I really feel like it's becoming a kind of like a conversation between colors and lines. It's like a symphony of colors and lines. Colors, patches and lines. And I enlarge the middle of this painting so you can see that it's almost like an abstract painting there with colors and lines, color blotches and lines. And yeah, take a look at this one. He poured in the middle. So a lot of times with uh, the splash ink paintings, when we watch Mr. Ho paint, a lot of times he would pour dark colors first, such as ink. And then he would layer, if he uses another color, he would layer those colors on top. And because he feels like the dark color kind of ground the painting, and here you can see a uh, big color pouring in the middle. And then he added rocks that is kind of geometric in shape there. This one is very bright colors, red. And color pouring and long lines. He used a lot of these long lines. And I feel like to, to me, when I look at these long lines that he uses, they're like music, they're like violin playing. They're like that kind of symphony of music in his paintings. 1993, 76 years old. 77, again, color patches and long lines that kind of they bounce off of each other. They kind of work together in harmony. 
1995, 78 years old. And I really find this painting to be very interesting because it's a lot more minimalistic than his other paintings. And it's just um, ink blotch on a gold background and one dot of red. And he added some more details on the side. 79 years old. I feel like his use of color is a lot more bold. And um, 19, uh, 1996, 79 years old. Now, yeah. This one, he said that he painted when he was in Asiloma. Um, but I feel like the top part could be even half dome. It looks like half dome to me. Um, so Mr. Ho often talked about his creative concepts. These are a couple of concept that are, concepts that are important to him. One is letting the spirit flow through you onto the brush and paper. And the second one is trust your intuition. Let it come through you naturally onto the paper. This one was done in uh, when he was 81 years old. And Mr. Ho would often tell us not to worry too much when we paint. Um, the essence of brush painting or splash ink painting is doing it in the moment letting whatever happens happen on the paper. In this way, there is no pretensions and your painting naturally become unique, spirited, alive. He said, not to worry about it being good or bad, just do it. Trust your intuition and your brushwork will arrive on the paper full of meaning. And of course, it's easy for him to say. <laughs> but it takes a lot of experience. Okay, 1998, 81 years old. 1999, 2000, 2001. And I feel like in his mid 80s, there is another breakthrough around 2001 and 2002, I see that his splashed ink is a lot more bold and wilder um, than ever before. Almost like an abstract painting, very little details in this one. But you can see that the blue, the layers of blue and orange and white, you can see mountains cascading down, right? 2002, 85 years old, large works, large scale works. This is a detail of his painting. You can see the little house on a little peak there in the middle and then a large pine. So scale, it doesn't matter in Chinese brush painting. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to, I just put this passage here. This is an introduction in the book, uh, Hoberen Art Museum, written by Feng Qiyong, who was the vice president of the Chinese Academy of Arts at that time. Feng Qiyong was also a very good friend of Mr. Ho. And I really feel like this passage described Mr. Ho's paintings very aptly. He said, on the one hand, Mr. Ho inherited the skills in traditional Chinese landscape, reflecting deep rooted Chinese sceneries. On the other hand, his color usage is truly magnificent and seldom seen in traditional brush painting. In comparison with contemporary Chinese artists such as Zhang Daqian, Liu Hai Su, Zhu Qijian, Mr. Ho's use of colors is even more bold and advanced. But the most outstanding part is the harmony of the whole painting. One could use strong colors, but not in harmony. However, Mr. Ho's paintings not only has great color contrast, but the whole relation of harmony. The use of strong colors can easily cause a painting to look jarring or fragmented, but Mr. Ho achieves an aesthetic that is unmatched. So let's take a look. Still 2002, 85 years old, large scale work. Two thousand two, 
2002. So he created a lot of works in 2002. And I feel like one of the reasons could be he was preparing for some works to be donated to the Kunshan Hoberian Museum. And that museum opens in 2004. So this is a, at 85 years old, this is a very creative period of his life. 86 years old. I, I just find the lines on this painting so powerful. And 2004, so I put in a couple of tradi more traditional artworks here to show that he was still doing traditional artworks besides flash ink paintings, but because um, of how he has changed his traditional paintings, it's not very traditional anymore. It's um, quite uh, different. Um, so 2004 is a year, Hoberian Art Museum in Kunshan near Shanghai open. 2005, he was 88 years old, very bright colors. 2007, 90 years old. 2008, 91 years old. I particularly very much, I love this painting. Um, he said that this painting was inspired by the Song Dynasty artist, Miyo Ren. And um, you can see on the right is Miyo Ren's painting. Um, Miyo Ren really revolutionized Chinese brush painting uh, because he wasn't using lines to paint the mountains. He was using dots. And I really believe that Miyo Ren is the first impressionist painter in the world in 12th century, 11th century, 12th century China. And in the painting, you can see that Mr. Ho's uh, painted the mountains very close to Miyo Ren's mountains with dots and peaks. But then he poured bright red in the middle of the painting. And he wrote on the side of the painting that if Miyo Ren saw his works, even Miyo Ren would think that he's crazy. <laughs> so I, I, I love this kind of conversation with, um, past masters, there is a time element in this painting. And then this is a four panel painting painted when he was 91 years old in 2008. I remember seeing this painting in Pacific Art League in his solo exhibition. It is so powerful. It is about 10 feet across, five feet up. And uh, I mean, more than that with uh, the mounting on the side, it's huge work. And um, Mr. Ho described this painting. He remembered how he painted this painting. He said, these four panels were painted on my garage floor. I kept kneeling down and getting up. My back ached from it. The wind picked up and blew my paper away. I bolted to catch, to chase after it, to catch it causing my ink to spill all over the place. So it's like he was 91. I mean, I think even some of us would complain that this is too hard to do, but he was 91 and painting in his garage, kneeling down and getting up. It's amazing. This is an incredible work. It really is like a symphony of colors and images. You can see on the top of the painting that he um, used some ink lines to kind of uh, sketch out some mountains. There's a little, little pavilion here, if you could take a look, closer look. Um, but the rest of it is just, just this, just symphony of colors of red hues and blue hues and white and black ink and some yellow. It's incredible. You could see, you could really feel the power of the landscape or, or just the abstract. It's like a rhythm of the heart in front of you. This painting I remember seeing at the Euphrat Museum in Dienza. Um, that was the first time I really saw Mr. Ho's works was in Dienza in 2008. And after I saw that, I was like, I gotta learn from him. <laughs> I 
going to find my way into his class. <gasps> and I'm happily I did. 2008. And you can see that is um, ink pouring on uh, this kind of like a card, um, like a cardboard kind of paper. And um, he just very briefly have some dots on there to indicate where the mountain is and a few lines in the back to indicate that there are rocks there. And he wrote on the side. And so those elements makes you um, think that is a Chinese brush painting, but with those, without those elements, it would be an abstract work. 2009, 92 years old. 2010, 93 years old. And I just really feel like, wow, this the bright colors on this painting looks makes him look like a teenager almost. It looks so young. 2010. 2011. This is the year he retired from teaching at Pacific Art League. And um I remember, I still remember when he said that he was going to retire, we, we were all like, why? <laughs> we thought that he would teach us forever. I, all of us think that he would teach us forever. Um, but he, I really feel like for the next few years, he concentrated on painting some very large scale paintings. And some of it um, went to Liaoning Art Museum. 2011. 2015 is when the Hobeiren and Zhang Yunqing Art Gallery opened in Liaoning Provincial Art Museum. So the Liaoning Provincial Art Museum is one of the 10 largest museums in China. It has a huge collection of ancient works. It is located in Liaoning province, uh, Northeastern China, uh, where the Qing Dynasty court used to be, uh, their, summer, their summer home used to be. Um, and that's why there is a huge amount of ancient artworks there that uh, still remained in China and not went to Taiwan. And when they rebuilt the museum, it is huge. Um, maybe even, I remember in my mind, I remember it's like as large as three football fields size. And they build a gallery in there, a very sizable gallery in there just for Mr. Ho to house his artworks, as well as um, they would have rotating exhibitions of modern Chinese artists' artworks, and as well as uh, American Chinese painting uh, painters' artworks in there. So it was a real honor when we got to travel with Mr. Ho in 1915 to attend the opening of that gallery. At, night, at age 98, he led us on a trip to China. It was just incredible. And um, we, we, of course, we got VIP treatment and we got to see just some of the most amazing artworks. We were so honored. 2015. 2015, and he said, um, the bottom of the painting is pine trees. And the colophon on the side, he wrote, um, wind uh, sweeping through pine trees, sounding like rain. And I just love that description. It, it, looks, like, it looks like rain there as well, in the middle there. 6-panel painting painted in 2016 when he was 99 years old. And this is a painting of his wife, um, his wife's hometown in northeastern China in the Changbaishan area, Changbai Mountains. It's an incredible six-panel artwork. Uh, you can see rocks, mountains, maybe waterfall. And on the left panel, you see a long um, colophon that is about seven, six, seven lines long. And it described the story of him meeting his wife. 2016. 2016. 
and this was done in 2017 when he was 100 years old, Mr. Ho said of this painting, these few white patches are very good, like mountains crumbling to the sea, very heavy. By contrast, the grass blowing in the wind at the bottom of the painting is very light. Simple composition, but so beautiful. Um, you can see actually within his dark ink, there is some indigo in there as well. Um, inside the orange color on the bottom, you can see some green, probably a few different kinds of orange, um, making the, the bright orange in the middle kind of makes the rocks come out more, more three-dimensional. 2017. And then the last painting I'm going to show you is one that was done in last year when he was 105. So let's take a look at the contemporaries of Mr. Hoberen in the US. So what's going on in the US art scene at the time? There is, um, I really feel like um, the closest artist um, in terms of the feeling of that kind of ink pouring is um, this great uh, color field painter, Helen Frankenthaler. Uh, you can see her, she, she titled her paintings, um, she gave her paintings kind of landscape-like kind of titles as well. So the painting on the left is titled Flood. The painting on the right is titled The Bay. These were done in the 1960s. She belonged to the um, abstract expressionist art movement. And within the abstract expressionist art movement, there are a few other movements as well. And she was the one who started this color field painting movement. She started pouring on ungesseled canvas. So just raw canvas so that the ink can seep into the canvas and to create the kind of effect that she wants. And the next painting is also by her. And an art critic described her paintings as the landscape of American abstraction. And this painting is titled Riverhead, 1963. And during that time, William de Kooning, of course, William de Kooning is not just a color field painter. He painted figurative and, um, he had lots of other abstract styles, abstract expressionist styles as well. Mark Rothko, these are a couple of his earlier works. So his later works is more, much more quiet with patches of colors and the earlier works has more details. Morris Lewis pouring on raw canvas, the same method that Helen Frankenthaler was using. And um, so I just wanted to show you Mr. Ho's paintings again so you can see that kind of, uh, kind of like a, a, you know, I don't want to say similarities, but um, there is definitely influence here and there. And I wanted to read you a little paragraph from the book. Um, Hoberen at 100. That was an exhibition here in the Bay Area a few years back. And Mr. Ho wrote an article in the book titled My 100 Years, An Artistic Journey. And he said, I studied painting under Mr. Huang Binghong in Beijing in the 1940s, and then under Mr. Zhang Shiqiao in, Zheng Shiqiao in the 1950s in Hong Kong. The two master painters led me to start a long artistic journey. The world since then had witnessed plenty of ups and downs, but thanks to luck or miracles, I always managed to find a desk to paint and Im immerse myself in the world of art. I spent most of my life far away from home and could only watch the wars, humiliations, and miseries that my homeland had endured from a distance. Through painting, I searched for my dream, my ideal and my soul, the mountains 
trees, valleys, waterfalls, clouds, rain, fog, people, and flowers that I plant, that I painted, are all reflections of my inner self. They are my emotions in colors and shades. I have aspired to show the boldness and beauty of nature. The colors of nature ought to be painted boldly. At the age of 100, I am still healthy enough to hold a brush and splash ink and colors to entertain myself. I feel contented. And in another book, uh, the Hobear and Art Museum book, I read this poem that he wrote on a different painting. I couldn't find that painting, but I find the poem to be very reflective of his art. And I'll read it to you. The autumn frost, intoxicated by the blood red maples. I grew older with more gray hair every year, walking stick in hand, watching the sunset against the distant mountain. How vast, how gorgeous. And he said that this poem, in this poem, he tried to express his innermost feelings about his painting career and his life. And I have just a few more pictures to show you of Mr. Ho in our art class. And um, the person sitting next to him is Betty Bugwater. She was the president of our group for many years in the 1970s and the 1980s, I believe. And um, a lot of Osaka activities were held in her house at that time. And she has a huge collection of art as well. And I said, lucky us here, but just not for his students, but lucky us in the Bay Area to have Mr. Ho as an artist here living and working here for the last 60 years. And lucky us for the world who has, you know, we have witnessed such a great artist and uh, just amazing. Uh, what a wonderful representative of Chinese, um, Chinese American art, art of the Chinese diaspora. And such joy in his paintings. And very, very thankful. And not just to Mr. Ho, but to Mrs. Ho, because every great artist needs a very good support partner a good, good supportive partner. Everyone needs a good supportive partner, especially Mrs. Ho, because one thing I forgot to mention in the Chinese uh, portion was that um, I remember one time somebody said uh, to Mr. Ho, oh, it's so hard. You know, you're like kneeling down, getting up and making these paintings. And then Mrs. Ho was on the side. Mrs. Ho was, my life is even harder. I have to sweep up all of his paints. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they are just such a great, such a great partnership between those two. And um, I will stop share now. And then um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sally. Hi, Karen. Maybe you can, um... It's wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. It was so wonderful. romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't, I, I wasn't going too fast for you guys. No, it's good. The speed is good. Good. Thank you so much for joining. I see Joy here. Joy is a um, board member of the Pacific Art League. And she, I mean, uh, she knew Mr. Ho from way back when. Joy, would you like to say a few words? Uh, we cannot hear you. I just wanted to, uh, you mentioned that um, Mr. Ho was hired by the Pacific Art League. Yeah. He actually offered his teaching to the Pacific Art League and he never took a fee in 54 years. Wow, really? I did not know that. 
That is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Is. What a great teacher, really. What a great artist. What a great teacher. Yeah. So let me see if online there are any questions. Um, very touching, wonderful lecture. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. Do you have any specific questions about splash ink paintings? Um, I have a, a one question about the um, the technique. How you said, like when you showed it, and uh, I think it was the when he's a uh, one hundred years old, mm -hmm. that painting. Yeah. And then I see a lot of crack, like in the white, uh, you know, white part. Did he like um, wrinkle the paper, or he just like kind of splash it and make that effect naturally like that? So oftentimes when we do splash ink painting, we would do it on a, you know, sometimes he would do it on multiple sheets of paper. He would stack sheets of paper together and mm -hmm. then you would line the floor or your table with a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times we would spray the paper wet first. Okay. So that the ink and the color can flow. Oh, so, okay. So when the paper is wet, it naturally would crinkle up. Okay, okay. And when it crinkles up, the ink will flow into the cracks. Okay. And when it dries, the cracks will appear. Oh, okay, great. That, that's but, very powerful. <laughs> yeah, but every kind of paper and the ink, how diluted it is, and how much water you use every huh. time is different every time is going to turn out different sometimes it's going to um you are able to create the effect that you like and sometimes it just doesn't happen so, so. for the mr ho like the, he always had the like um like you know how do you design the whole piece of art or he's kind of pouring the ink and then go by the floor like how it's gonna look like like does he have a certain process or always go by the feeling um i think i can try to answer but we have some students here <laughs> who have been with mr ho a lot longer than i have been do you have any very curious yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay um I feel like it is both sometimes he would have some ideas but after you pour it is never going to be the same as how you envisioned the painting at first hmm. so every time you just kind of have to go with the flow and um sometimes my own process I can talk about my own process is I would just stare at it for a long time. And sometimes you you don't think that you can use what you have poured and you put it away for a while and you take it out again a while later and you can think of something suddenly. Um, and then as I think as he add layers of colors onto it, he would start developing it. He would often say to us that, um, you pour boldly, but you be careful when you put it together. So, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. So um, there is that kind of combination. Um, you you really have to think when you are really going to put the details on an abstract pouring painting how you wanted to put it together. Got it. Yeah, it, it it's very powerful. Like I think uh as I I'm myself learning like Chinese painting as a beginner now, yeah, like, it just very uh uh you, you can feel like so much energy in the painting that I and never see other okay. Chinese painting like that. Yeah. So um especially with the painting that he did when he was a hundred years old, the grass on the bottom, the mm -hmm. grass that is blowing on in the wind on the bottom, sometimes just those few strokes. It's the hardest because those yeah. two strokes really show the strength of your strokes. And if mm -hmm. your strokes is not strong or 
you hesitate, it shows. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like, you know, you really have to be like from experience, then you, you could be so carefree when you do that. Mm -hmm. Then it's like really good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Karen, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering how did uh, Mr. Ho's teaching affect your own painting style? <laughs> I feel like a teacher always influence a student um, mm -hmm. one way or another, but um, more so than, I mean, first of all, technically, I learned a lot from him technically, just how to draw a, a tree naturally, because Mr. Ho's trees, like his pine trees, his, um, you know, all kinds, he has different kinds of pine trees, he's different kinds of flowering trees, um, different kinds of houses. And I, I really, I, I learned from those and I, I love it. Um, and those are techniques and also is a way of representing something and um, how to create a splash ink painting, um, but also adding to it Chinese elements. But I always feel like more than that, more than learning techniques from your teacher, you learn from your teacher their way of life, their attitude towards art, um, their steadfastness, their how hardworking they are, and how dedicated they are to the art form. So I, I really feel like I learned about that just as much, if not more, than from my teacher. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Anybody wa wanted to add something? What, oh, I want to Yeah, okay, please. How, how is his wife? Uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she uh, how, how they are similar in age um but you, you she never disclosed her age <laughs> um, um she was always very supportive um uh i i, I don't know um I, she doesn't she doesn't do painting or art, um, but she was always very supportive, always attending events. Um, and as she said, she would sweep up after he paints. <laughs> she would clean up. <laughs> I think it's pretty amazing for a couple to live such a long life together. Amazing, just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, almost unheard of, I think. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> We need to learn other than art from them is uh, the other life of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is they need to have a lecture about life. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And from what I see, they live very normal lives. They never like really eat anything special. You know, when we go out to eat together, we just always eat the same things and they love fried foods. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Ho drinks whiskey at night. Oh, a glass wow. of whiskey every Man night. Tea. That is the secret. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little cup of whiskey every night. Yeah. Really. yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Lou. Yeah, his son and his daughter are here. Would you would you like to add something to <laughs> about their longevity? No, I just want to uh, say that my mom. Yeah. yeah. Well, she would give him a bite. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to come up and say no, something? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, what kind of advice would Mrs. Hall give to Mr. Hall? I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Can, can you guys... Hang on. Lucia, Lucia. Lucia, we can hear you. It seems like she can. 
，但是在 Apple Computer 我就不知道要怎么做。呀，我就因为这个原因，我都没有办法去订货，因为我要看说我要进去怎么怎么去看我。Okay, I think we quiet it. Yeah. Okay. So please tell me what what kind of advice. Well, just about、uh, the art show, how we went. Uh huh. What we could have done better. Just not in terms of technique, but what we could have done to help to make the art show better. Oh, okay. She is a manager. She is his manager. Yeah. So,、um, Louis,、uh, Mr. Ho's son just commented that、uh, Mrs. Ho would give him,、uh, would give Mr. Ho advice. So, advice on,、um, like, for example, a painting exhibition, how we could have gone better,、um, what she saw,、uh, her observations, and I think that that is probably very helpful. For Mr. Ho, because in the middle, when you're in the middle of things, you cannot, you know, notice all these things around you. And it was really helpful to have a manager like Mrs. Ho. Her true thoughts. Oh, she, yeah, she gave her true opinions. Yes, her true thoughts. Yes, and she's also, you know, has an artistic I don't know if you guys could hear. I will try to repeat what、uh, Rose just said. Rose is Mr. Ho's daughter, Mr. and Mrs. Ho's daughter, and、um, she said that Mrs. Ho、uh, actually has an artistic background. I didn't know that.、Um, that she's actually studied ceramics, and、um, she they collected ceramic artworks at home, and、um, so she has an artistic eye, and she was able to help him.、Uh, She, you know, you could probably say it better. So, so、um, <laughs> would you like to come up, please? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, she she would be his、um, biggest supporter and his harshest critic.、Uh, she would have. I I when you said like the yes or no or she would she would say the. She would say her opinions. She would clearly. clearly, yeah, what she liked and what she didn't like,、right. and how it could be better, probably. Yeah, and he listened. He listened, he listened to her. Not, yeah. Just, oh, right, right. He he took her her, her advice to heart. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So more so at exhibits and pictures, things that were going to be shown in public. She has a strong opinion. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, so that is very special. Is that Mr. Ho encouraged Mrs. Ho to keep an eye on his works, and because、um, a lot of artists work very privately, but it sounds like they are real partnership. So Mr. Ho would make paintings, and、um, sometimes he would put them away, and Mrs. Ho would look at them, and she would tell him what she sees in them, and、uh, you know her opinions mattered to him. So he piled with his work, yeah, and he would put some things down on the 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 on the
he would have a pile of his artworks that, you know, finished or unfinished uh, on his desk and he would put them face down. And uh, the next morning he would go into his studio and he, they would all be facing up. And Mrs. Ho would be ready with her opinions to tell him what she liked and what she didn't like or what she, she thought could be better or, yeah, amazing. Just amazing. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, I think uh, if you have not come to see our exhibit or if you uh, are in the Bay Area and could join the exhibit, we have only got um, Today is a, a Saturday, uh, so it is not open tomorrow or Monday, but it's open on Tuesday. And uh, by Wednesday noontime, we'll start taking down. So Tuesday is really the only full day you could come <laughs> see the show if you have not seen it. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate all of you coming on to listen to this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh?